All right, guys, today we're doing something a little bit different. I'm here at my buddy's house. We're on our way to the parts store to go fix my truck. And uh, we're just trying to advise my friend's son who um, has a Honda CRV that he heard some noises and smoking under the hood. And we're just trying to advise him on what he needs to do. So that's the intro for this Honda CRV smoking noise. You said that. And we don't have to, you don't have to be on camera. So my, my buddy's, he doesn't care. Okay, this is my buddy, Aaron, real close friend of mine. It's his son's car. You said that he had air conditioning work done on this not long ago. <clears throat> no, his air conditioning went recently. Okay. In the last four or five days. He got a new battery. They checked the alternator. They said it was good. Okay. But I don't know if there's something, maybe it's the last four, the last four or five days, the AC went out. And then yesterday he's driving home. And you said you did check the coolant level. Check it's coolant. good. Everything's good. Yeah. Oil level's good. A little yeah. bit low, but it's a Honda. They all burn a little bit of oil. Uh, actually, that's not true. Some of the Hondas do. Um, and then um, you drove it here. How did um, a mile it was? And a half away. It was noisy. You know, we'll hear the noise right away when you start it. Go ahead, start it. Let's let's listen right. to it. Sweet. Okay. Kill it. Yeah, kill it. So the, the good news is initially, this is some type of a bearing noise, not an engine noise. Mm -hmm. That's huge. Mm -hmm. Like this isn't gonna be, hey, you need an engine. Like water pump bearing maybe? I'm not sure yet. Here's the thing. Camera isn't picking this up. I smell something electrically burnt. Hmm. So he saw smoke mm -hmm. and I smell electrical burning, which the real, one of the things that we look for, like alternator and things like that. But what I need from you, is something long metal that I can that I can put to my ear as a stethoscope, yeah. like a long screwdriver, yeah. something like that. And then come here, I want to show you guys something. So I smell something electrical, right? Um, and then I also see those black lines that look like they're coming off of the AC compressor. That's the AC compressor down there, and there's actually two lines you can see. One right there on the radiator support and then one just inside of it. Um, that might be the clutch that burned up on his AC compressor. And it's a clutch bearing noise on the uh, AC compressor itself. That's, that's what I think is possible here, um, especially given that he doesn't have a battery light on or anything like that. And unfortunately, I didn't bring any equipment with me other than my scan tool. Uh, well, we could look at battery voltage on the scan tool. Aaron, you don't have a voltmeter, do you? You do? No way. That's awesome. Just trying to gather some evidence here on what he needs to do, what we can advise him to do. This might work, this magnet. You know what? This will work. Yeah, this will work. That'll be enough to transfer. Um, I'm going to have you start it again here in a second, Aaron. I just want to see what your battery voltage is. Because if I don't have good battery voltage, then we'll, we'll lean more toward um, the um, alternator. I'm um, just trying to gather evidence here on this noise. But the good news is, Aaron, I was worried when you called me because you said he said he saw smoke and, you know, I was worried about um, I was worried about overheating and, yeah. and hurting the engine. I, I, don't, I just don't think that that's the case here, buddy. So, like, for your son's sake, that's awesome. That's brand new so I shouldn't be showing 14 volts right now, though. The car is off. Now I don't trust this meter because like 14.8, there's no way that that's accurate. 15 volts, like the car's not even running right now. I think it's time for a new meter. Now I'm at 17 volts. <laughs> so we, uh, we, paid extra for we definitely extra. cannot, <laughs> we definitely can't rely on this volt meter. So um, yeah, right, can't do that. Um, you can have this back, Aaron. Careful. Maybe. <laughs> yeah, probably, probably. Um, I did bring my little top scan so we can scan this. So I should be able to see battery voltage on the scan tool. That's all I care about. Let's do some noise checks first before we do this. Uh, just uh, go ahead and uh, fire this up, Aaron, and I want to see if I can pick this up for everyone. No, that's the AC compressor. So I'm going to put my mic up to this, all right? That's so bad. Hey, listen. AC compressor, alternator. Now I want to listen. Oh, like, I can't even put my ear to it, it's that loud. That is your AC compressor, brother. So 
So, so, the AC so not the not the compressor, but the clutch bearing. Okay. Well, it could be a compressor. So that's why it makes noise when it's even off. Correct, because the AC clutch face is not even turning right okay. now. There is a clutch bearing, okay. and that bearing went, uh -huh. and that's what smoked. That's why I smell electrical too. It's because it smoked that clutch. Like when that bearing goes, you're gonna cut into the coil, uh -huh. and that's probably the smoke that he saw. And if you look close there and look down here, you can see see the black lines right yeah. there. Yeah, yeah. That yeah. comes. That's your AC uh, compressor right there, and the clutch right there. Yep. That came from that. And you can smell I can electrical. Smell it, yeah. yeah, yeah. You need a you need a clutch. Yeah. So those black lines, Aaron, would be the clutch itself. Probably the, the electrical part of the clutch shorted. And now you got all kind of carbon and spitting out. That was the smoke that he saw. We smell, you mm -hmm. smell the electrical. Mm -hmm. Wait, yep. So it was either going to be alternator or AC clutch. And I watched the pulley, and this is something we'll see if we can catch on camera. I watched the pulley sits a little bit sideways and is rubbing. And when he shut it off, you could see the clutch face move, which you never want to see with the AC off, which is what we had. So now the question becomes, do you do a, a whole compressor mm -hmm. or do you do just the clutch? When you're in the field, we would recommend the whole entire compressor mm -hmm. assembly, right? Um, just because. Because the labor to go in there and do that. <laughs> I mean, you're going to pull the compressor out anyway. Right. Um, there are crap parts that are sold today. So mm -hmm. in a, like doing a clutch, I wouldn't recommend. I would be searching for an AC compressor. Um, this is one that we can actually, Caleb and I can do for you. Like um, do the work? Yeah, yeah, because we can, you know, we people like to see AC repairs and we haven't done one in a while. And this doesn't look like it would be too bad to do. I could do it probably from underneath. The only thing would be, did it blow all the juice out? Because no, we checked the charge on that when he said his AC wasn't working last week. We checked it. Okay. And, and it was. So what we charged. would what we would need to do is take it to my brother's shop. And that was before that clutch went though. Would that? Would it gas out after that? So I was going to say that, and this is for everyone else too. When you when you have a clutch failure, a clutch failure is different from a compressor failure. You have a compressor failure where the compressor locks up um, or pumps its debris through the whole system. You're talking about a very expensive repair because you're talking about a compressor. You're talking about the restricted uh, restriction, which would be either a, a expansion valve or orifice tube, depending on design. This being a Honda, I'm pretty sure it's an expansion valve. Sometimes you have to replace the condenser because where it goes from the compressor is it pumps its guts into the condenser first and then you can't clean those passages out. So you're talking compressor, condenser, orifice tube, uh, TXV, and then a dryer, big bucks. And then labor to go in that, like you could easily, easily be in, in this for a thousand, fifteen hundred, two thousand, depends on the car, mm -hmm. right? But I think in our case, this is a clutch failure only. I'm gonna take the front face of that compressor and mm -hmm. make sure that I can still turn it. Okay. Which will tell me a little bit about the, the compressor itself. Mm -hmm. And you said the AC worked fine up until this point. Four or five days ago. Yeah. I, I don't think that this was I don't think that this was a compressor failure. I think this was a clutch, clutch. failure. We hope. We hope. If it's a compressor failure, I have no interest in the job. <laughs> this would be one. This would be one where your son's not going to have air conditioning, and gotcha. and, and then we put you a just disconnect. That, well, you can't because it's all one, it's belt. All one belt. But yeah. we might be able to, depending on the car. Sometimes they sell bypass kits where you use a shorter belt and then you bypass the compressor. I don't know if that's an option here. So as you can see. I can turn the front face of this compressor, no problem. Which means the compressor was not locked up. This was just a clutch failure, Aaron. That means you're in good shape, my friend. Right. So the only thing we can't do, Aaron, at home is recover the refrigerant that's in here. We'll take it to my brother's shop, pull the refrigerant out, do the repair, then we can do the rest. Okay. Um, let's see if we can just confirm now clutch for you guys. Oh yeah, you can see it from this. Absolutely, is sitting crooked. Yeah. So the pulley on that is tweaked. Okay, don't move. The pulley is tweaked. Yeah, because Conf the clutch went. Because the bearing went. The bearing went. That's it, bearing that's clutch. why, and and then that's what would chew up the clutch. Yeah. There was no concern about the motor, right? There is no concern about the motor, Aaron. Sweet. But I would not drive this because um, that's going to get worse and lock up, and then you're going to shear the belt. Mm 
Uh -huh. And then is this water pump driven by that belt or yeah, is it just, is it a chain driven water pump or is it a belt driven? Belt. I watched uh, watched a video on. So then then we're gonna have issues. Yeah. Like this is this is probably enough like to say hey let's let's drive it to my brother's shop you know yeah. but not anything not anything beyond that. Yeah. No, I think I would I'd I'd chance it. The reason why is. You're going to know when the belt goes because you're going to lose power steering. Your battery light's going to come on yeah, right. and you just shut the car off. Right. And then you get it towed from that point. It's right. not like you're going to be one of those people that keep driving it. Right. I just want to see if there's any one last thing that we can show everyone else here on camera with that pulley. I bet you that sound came through really well. Let's see if we can, um, let's get shots, Caleb. Right here is gonna be your camera angle, right here of the clutch. And we're gonna start the car and shut it off and watch the pulley. Go ahead, start it, Aaron. Did you see the clutch move? That shouldn't have happened, shut it off. Start it back up. Shut it off. So that rust cloud that you saw is, is pieces of the bearing. And I then, it. and then it catching that was cool. We were able to ca uh, catch that. It caught the outside of the compressor clutch face, like the the shaft of the compressor. That shouldn't happen when you start it. Good, start it again. Kill it. One more time. Okay, kill it. That works. I think that's good enough. What that shows is the. Um, Clutch bearing failure, and when the bearing fails, so the so we got two two surfaces there, and so this hand's got the bearing on it. This hand's the front face of the compressor, uh -huh. and that has a shaft that runs through inside and then spins the inside, right? So, but this is the part that's turning all the time. Mm -hmm. That bearing failed, and then it made it made this hand basically sit cockeyed. Okay. So as this is cockeyed, now it's rubbing on the front face of that. Yeah. That's what you're hearing when we start the car. It's, it's catching that, uh -huh. and we have this big rust cloud too, <laughs> showing us, you know, that's where our issue is. Right. The black lines that are on there mm -hmm. is also confirmation. The sound, of course, and then the smell of burning, mm -hmm. which would be that clutch itself, probably just melted down from friction. Mm -hmm. um, not that it necessarily cut into the windings, but right. it probably got so hot that the windings shorted and it just said, okay, I'm, mm. I'm done. That's a, that's a compressor for sure. Or, or a clutch for sure. I just want to do one little quick. Um, well, I got a can at the gauge on. Oh, sweet. That works. Let me see that. This will just give us an indication. Although, how does this? So I don't want to open the can. Right. The, tr the trigger is going to open the can, right? Uh, right, but it won't because that says it's full. It won't even allow you to. Okay. So what, when you snap this on. Yeah. What I don't want is I don't want a reading of the can. I just want a reading of the system. That's what yeah, I'm. Yeah, it's gonna go to red, I think. Oh, sweet. Yeah, okay, see. cool. So we're over. Can There's you disconnect and get another shot of that. No, I can't because <laughs> it's self-sealing. So. You didn't see that. Nope. <laughs> So can I leave that off? I bet you I can. Let me see. Because this trigger opens that valve. Yeah. So if we leave this off, then I can re just use the gauge. We Hold should. That in the shadow a little bit. Yep, right there. Don't move. You ready? You ready, sir. Okay. Sweet. So what we have, there's 60, there's 150. So a huge gauge in between right here um, as far as numbers go. You know, that's probably about 100 PSI. This system still is full, um, you know, pretty much confirming to what I'm saying, which is we had a clutch failure here. We did not have a compressor that failed, destroyed itself, pumped its guts in the system. I can rotate the front of that shaft easily. Um, I still want you to get a compressor because I'm not just going to do a clutch on yeah. this. Yeah, sure. I've just, you, you yeah, can run into right. problems with that and so start doing your homework, Aaron, on a compressor. And then from here, we'll wrap this up for now. Just some good quick tip uh, stuff in this video. Um, we'll pick this back up. Um, probably going to do this one at my brother's shop. And because he's got the recovery machines that we want to use, 
he's got a lift that'd be much better. And uh, we'll, we'll pick up the AC uh, repair video in, in, we'll call it a part two at my brother's shop. So thanks for joining us, guys. We'll see you on the next one. Yeah, that's can, is, can, that right, that's right. Too. We still good audio wise? Mm -hmm. Are we recording? Yes. One final piece I forgot to mention. I said I was worried about the battery. I am no longer worried about the battery, the alternator, um, just based on what we saw. Is there a battery gauge inside or is it just, just a light? Light. Just a light. light yeah. And we don't see a battery light on with it running. No. Um, I said I was going to plug the scan tool in and look at battery voltage. I'm not going to do that. I'm comfortable with what we're looking at here. And uh, we're going to, like I said, pick this up in a part two. So we'll prove it to you guys on the next one. All right. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> Does that tell you anything about today? It's my little personal fan. Hear it? Clips on your belt for your back. My wife bought it for me because I'm sweaty all the time. So it's like 93 degrees today with a 75 degree dew point. And we decided we're gonna replace an AC compressor in my friend's car for him. But anyway, on a good note, we're at Danner's Automotive. He's got a new sign. So that's where we are. And hopefully he's got some garage space for us. I don't think he does, man. We're gonna be out here working. Again, I'm doing this for a friend, right? And we're doing it right. We're at my brother's shop so we can recover this refrigerant, change this compressor, and show you guys the, you know, this is like two hours of hell for three minutes of footage for you guys. But whatever, hey, that's what we do. So he lost the belt. I got a battery light on, I can't turn the wheel. He lost the belt on, on the drive here, which is really unfortunate because we don't have a belt. Well, no, he, he lost the, the serpentine belt on the drive over here. He's only like two, a few miles away and oh, he? he shredded it. Yeah. Why, we, did the compressor we, lock up? Um, well, so the bearing was real bad and I told him, I said, I thought it'd be okay to drive it here. <laughs> and he, he shredded the belt. There's the belt. Nice. He didn't say that. No, he didn't know that. Fortunately, he's really close because that drives the water pump too. Yeah. He's only like two miles away. I wonder when that belt shredded. It was nice and quiet when I started up. No, no more noise. <laughs> Ha, ha, ha.